The Washington, D.C. Auto Show was the perfect opportunity to test out some electric vehicles from different manufacturers, as well as learn about electric charging from Electrify America. Vehicles like the new Audi e-tron, the Jaguar I-Pace, the Kia Nero EV, and the Hyundai Kona EV all had opportunities to drive. Train. We are operating on a 95 kilowatt hour battery that sits right underneath the vehicle's chassis for equal weight distribution. The battery can have a range of 204 miles on a single charge, not too bad for an SUV that weighs over 5,000 pounds. And we are powered by Audi Quattro, which is the vehicle's all-wheel drive system, Audi's legendary all-wheel drive. That's going to keep us gripped through these tight turns and hard accelerations here. Uh, charge times, they vary for a level one. You're looking at about 96 hours, that's your 120 volt outlet for a full charge. Level two, that's the 240 outlet, that's about nine hours for a full charge. And of course, we do have level three available for your convenience, those are the DC fast charging stations. You get a 80% charge from a dead battery in about 30 minutes. Pretty convenient uh, charging. The thing I like best about the e-tron, it's an SUV first, so very roomy back seat space, great cargo capacity. You can actually fit people in, the, uh, in this car. And of course, a very smooth ride, courtesy of Audi. Beautifully done fit and finish, amazing leather, great wood trim, impressive technology, nothing short of what you'd expect from Audi. So we're going to take it on a quick little course here. <laughs> I promise you won't be as loud as, uh, as the Hyundai. Well, you, be you, a much more you, were, you were pretty loud earlier. Yeah, we kind of got it up to some nice cornering here. We kind of put the Quattro through its test here. Uh, so we'll uh, hang tight here, gentlemen. We're going to kind of see what this car can do here. Here we go. Offers impressive pickup, tight cornering with torque vectoring technology, thanks to Quattro all wheel drive. Really seamless acceleration and deceleration. We do have brake regeneration in this vehicle that'll get you a little bit of an extra charge as you brake the car. And we're gonna take it up to about 30 miles per hour here, about two seconds flat. There's 30. And that was all accomplished by a battery. <laughs> And how many t uh, times does this vehicle have to be charged in a day or in or? Uh, well, just depending on your commute. Uh, but I know as you're using it here. In, oh, in as you're using it. Actually, when I've got it, you know, we had the 204 this a uh, couple of days ago, and we actually haven't charged it for a little while. Right now, I'm at 85, so wow. it really, uh, it really holds its charge real well. And yeah. we've been, I mean, I mean, we've yeah, you're been all around uh, yeah, during yeah. the because I was giving tours here over the weekend. Oh yeah, and this place was packed. Oh, so. absolutely. Yeah, we've been going at it. I mean, we've been pushing these cars to its limit essentially. And I mean, from 204 to 85, and then a couple of days, it's not not too bad. I mean, they hold their charge really. really really well uh, quality engineered vehicle I tell you it's a very impressive vehicle to drive solid and smooth you, re you feel really confident behind the wheel that's what I really like about the Audi it's very safe very confident ride so, uh, hope you guys enjoyed that awesome. about 258 miles on a single charge which is by far the best in class uh, lifetime warranty on our batteries all our Hyundai electric vehicles um, you're looking at a, uh, about nine and a half hours to charge from 0 to 100 on level 2 which is uh, household 220 to 40 uh, price range 36,500 to 44,500 uh, depending on the state you live in government incentives uh, 10,000 to 11,500 uh, basically car handles extremely well uh, minimum roll for a small SUV, as you will find out as we go around the course. <laughs> so um, we sell them in three states right now, distribution, California, Connecticut, and Maryland. Mm -hmm. We're expanding our distribution as we speak. You can buy them in those states and bring them across the state lines, and the uh, rebates are still 100% valid and warranty is 100%. Uh, some more states, HOV lanes are free with EV vehicles. Uh, 201 horsepower, 
We're all here for the 291 foot pounds of torque that makes it happy, <laughs> and we're ready to go, and we're going. <laughs> So it handles very well. <laughs> so a little bit about uh, that you just felt in the car. We went into a skid here. Uh, mm -hmm. The reason for that is even on a skid, the car doesn't roll. It's mm -hmm. basically very, very level. We're going to be on power over there, and we're going to be on the brakes in the last one. Okay. And you'll see minimum roll. Is it traction control? No. Before? No? Come on. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Yeah. So we're skidding, we're under power, mm -hmm. and we're braking, and you have minimum roll. The car okay. really comes back real quick, and you have even patches okay. uh, on four tires. Okay. Like, is it uh, um, dual wheel drive? Front wheel drive. Front wheel drive. Yes. Okay. And what size are the tires? I couldn't tell you exactly what they are. Okay. Um, I don't have that, that information. Because they sound like sporty tires, but EVs don't usually carry no, sporty tires. they're actually tires. hard compound tires. Okay. Because all EVs, you know, for, yeah, right. for, for rolling for resistance. less resistance, yeah. we're using hard compounds. Yeah. Uh, so lots of nice features, heads-up display. The front seats are heated and vented. Mm -hmm. uh, heated steering wheel, 8.5-inch electronic display. So it's pretty well put together. Okay. It's a very safe vehicle, just the way you felt it. Minimum roll on the SUV. Okay. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. There's also four drive modes in this. Uh, and one of the big, I don't know if we talk about it, the regeneration, uh, you can control with one paddle all the way down to a stop. So it's almost like uh, coming to mimics one pedal driving. You can regen all the way down to a stop. Uh, and you'll see from one of the videos, although the official range is 239 miles, um, in one of the videos we drive from Las Vegas to Los Angeles, uh, which is about 270, we went to the convention center, it's about 270 miles, and there was still 20 miles of range left. So you can, and that wasn't even hyper mile. Uh, you, it, it does stretch, but officially, range is 239. But zero to sixty with this is in the sevens. Yeah, yeah. I think I mean, that's the still, that's still fast. You know, but I mean, before electric cars, that was really fast. Yeah, right. a nice solid feel to it. How's it feel back there, Bill? It's fine. thought you're not going to leave the house with 100% state of charge, you're going to charge 80% because that's typically what EVs do, they charge 80 for fast charging. So that left us with 120 miles from, 100, from 200 mile starting point. So that was the maximum range we decided on. Frankly speaking, on the east and west coast highways, north and south, the range is closer to 50 miles on average. Could I drive coast to coast with a 200 mile range EV? Yes, you could. Okay. Yes, you could. On two cross country routes today. Hey, at least parking spaces from the site host. Okay. So Walmart will have a national contract with them. We'll pick out the stores that align for our target zones where we need to be. And of course, I think we're at well over 200 sites alone with Walmart and Cycle One. But they have huge parking lots, of course. 24 7 access is important too. They're well lit, they're in safe uh, areas. That's very important to us. So it's a sublease for a period of 10 years. Uh, and typically we might pay a, a small fee for that parking space per month. 
ideally it's zero because mm. we're bringing equipment in and amenities that frankly brings incremental business to that site host. And what about power supply to those power space? Supply, yeah. um, so so um, do you have to be in like a runoff site host power? As you can imagine, if you have a, a highway stall, we, by the way, our highway stations are four to 10 chargers. 10 chargers, with two of them being 350 kilowatt, the rest being 150 kilowatt, that's over two megawatts of power from a utility, which is a lot. So typically we'll bring in our own transformer. We don't run off site host power. And um, our budgets will cover the additional utility work that is needed to make the chargers uh, possible. And obviously this is very good business for utilities because they've had flat load growth for many years. Of course, EVs and transportation fuel is the next open space for them and they, they love working with us and we love working with them. Be finished. Uh, the power that comes in is that green power, coal power, I mean, because that's always a thing that... It's what the grid supplies in that local area, and obviously over time the grid is becoming greener. Lo local policies and mandates are forcing it that way. We are also installing batteries at a lot of our sites in areas where utilities levy demand peak charges, and that's a premium for electricity when it's essentially delivered in a short amount of time at high power. Those are charges typically meant for large businesses, industrial complexes, not EVs. So we're actually trying to work with public utilities and, and the commissions to, to kind of bring those demand peak charges down because uh, they don't work well with a business case for charging, especially today. Thank you. Yeah. This is uh, quite an achievement, an all new design. It's called a kiosk style charger. In the old days, everything that made a charger work was inside one box. And it typically looked like, uh, well, an industrial refrigerator. It wasn't much to look at. And there's a key point there because people tell us today that even when they live next to or work next to an EV charger, they don't see them. And that's a problem because chargers today are inconspicuous. They don't have proper signage. They're not in the uh, uh, visible part of the parking lot, okay? And they're not aesthetically designed. We wanted to take care of that with this all new kiosk approach, which the kiosk by design is eight feet tall. And we do the eight feet tall to allow the core to to basically stretch to the car charging port more easily. You can put cable management systems in there. They typically break. They don't work in cold weather. So we went with a vertical height, which by the way is more eye-catching too, especially when you add LED lighting like the green lights here. And some other features of the charger, uh, the cable, I encourage you to try it out today. It's the first liquid cooled cable in the industry. And the reason we do that, this charger will deliver up to 1,000 volts at 350 amps. Okay, and later this year, the Porsche will come to market and receive that kind of power. The Audi, of course, will take 150 kilowatts, which is more powerful than anyone else today, uh, from a medium voltage battery pack. So that gives us great future proofing. So literally any car on the road for the next few years will be able to pull up to this charger and get fast charging very easily. Sorry, the cooled cable, by the way, is um, it's a non-conductive liquid and it's in there to essentially bring down the size of the copper that would have been in there if we had not liquid cooled it. And a lot more copper to bring more amps in would have been heavy and hard to bend. So liquid cooling is the way to get around that. Quite a misperception of charging today. Uh, 70 to 80 percent of it will typically take place at home. But if you ask a would-be EV driver, they say I need as many charging stations out there as there are gasoline stations, which is just not true.